We have a spectacular morning, and I'm going to be painting a local landmark here that is called the Keyhole. And I've got my setup here, and I'm going to quickly just explain what my setup is for those of you that aren't familiar with this. This is a tripod and a Poe shod box that are made by a company called Artworks Essentials, and um, it's called the Easy L. <clears throat> and it's available online through artworkessentials.com. My palette is set up with my earth tones and my warm colors here on the left, and then graduating into the cool colors, the blues and the greens on the right. I like to paint across the palette, as you'll see when I'm working through the demo. My brushes are a combination of flats and filberts, and then I'm painting on this support, which is linen, on gator board and this is available through a company called New Traditions. Um, they make panels and they're also online. So I've started by mixing what I call a mother color and I'm going to just remix this so you can see what the um, components are. It's basically just ultramarine blue and white but I want a value 5. And when we're talking about value, we're talking about not color itself, but the lightness or darkness of a color. So if we called white 1 and black 10, this would be somewhere in the middle, like a middle gray. And if you want to check this out, um, you can use a uh, cellophane viewer and um, look through it, and it'll show you what your value is. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, and I put just a tiny bit of uh, burnt sienna in here just to tone it down. Now this color here we call the mother color or mud. I want to familiarize you a little bit with some of the tools that I use outdoors. Um, this is one. This is also made by Easy All the people that uh, make the pochade box. And if you hold this up you can see that it already has the golden rectangle in the middle worked out for you. And I've already done that on my um, painting here. Another brush go. What I did is I went ahead and marked on the canvas where these lines would be. This is kind of dividing your board into thirds. And then where these lines would cross, I'm just going to indicate a little bit here, where these lines would cross would be the golden rectangle or the golden mean. Now the reason this is important is because it gives you a reference point for creating your composition and design. So there it is, just so you can see it within the context of the painting. Another excellent tool especially when you're learning to see value. This is just a piece of red cellophane with some cardboard around it. But if I hold this out in the landscape, what happens is it takes all the color out. And now I'm just reading value. So I can hold this out here and say, OK, the sky is about a 1 and a half or a 2. The white water is a 1. This mass um, of this rock formation is probably about a 7, and in places an 8. And I can accurately judge my values with that. Then the third thing that's handy to have, you can use uh, your fingers to do this, but this is just a more convenient way to use this little tool. This is a viewfinder. And so I can hold this up and decide what portion of this am I painting. Am I just going to paint a third of it or two-thirds of it? I've chosen to bring it over about two-thirds into the painting. And having said that and kind of walked you through the palette and the equipment, we're going to go right into the painting process now. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and find a mid-tone value for this land mass. And then mixing a combination of color and mixing a little burnt sienna, 
a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm adding just a little bit of this mother color to kind of tone it down. You'll see that. And we'll just kind of test it out here. Yeah, it's a little bit dark, so we'll add a little bit more. Wow, the light's changing really quickly out here. So knowing that, we want to just block things in as quickly as possible. This is what I call the block-in. The design and composition were pretty much complete when we started to just kind of speed things up. And the design and composition would be kind of phase one in the painting process. There's three kind of phases here. And right now we're just handling the block in. Okay. Okay, I'm backing up a little bit, and this is really important when you're painting outdoors because you want to see the painting from here. That's where your viewer is going to be looking at your painting. And if you paint up close the whole time, you really kind of lose a sense of what, um, what's going on in the painting. So it's important to back up. Okay. Now, again, I'm still kind of working with this block in. And what I want to do is just block in the major shapes. At this point, I'm not concerned with detail at all. OK, it's working out nicely. We want to be sure that the shapes are working nicely together. And in a painting this size, this is about, uh, actually this is 14 by 18. And so in a painting this size, you don't want too much information. In other words, you want to keep it on the simpler side. So how we accomplish that in plein air painting is you want to choose a subject 
that's about, oh, let's say has about four or five major shapes in it. And one of the things that I try to pay particular attention to in plein air painting is temperature. So what does that mean? Well, it means that things that are farther away are going to be cooler. And if you use your cooler tones in the um, background, you can mo create more of an illusion of depth. Okay. 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 Another thing that I'm focusing on when I paint plein air on location like this is I want to establish a pattern of lights and a pattern of darks in the paintings. When you look at the painting, you want to be able to see the darks as if it were a piece of string kind of leading you through the painting and also the lights as if they were a piece of string leading you through the painting. And this kind of knits the painting together as it were. So I'm going to do a little bit more of a wipeout up here just to bring a little bit of light into this area. Okay, so the values are already pretty much established in the painting. The value range is pretty much established. And in this painting, we have a pretty full value range. In some paintings, you have a high key painting where the values go from, say, oh, six to one. Other paintings, like a nocturne, you'd have low key values. But this painting is pretty much a full value range. I'm adding a few darks in here. And this is going to give us something to read against in terms of go ahead and add a little bit of light up on the top of this cliff and I'm using a color called cadmium green and some of the colors on here are not real mixable um, in other words it would be very difficult to get this color or impossible really by mixing it which is why I have it on the palette it's very intense it's almost as intense as what I'm seeing out there Nature can always make things more intense than we can paint them, but kind of losing our little points out here for the golden mean.
Oops. Adding a little bit of a complement in here with burnt sienna, a little bit of magenta. Again, stepping back a little bit just to get a sense of where we are. And paying attention to value. These trees are quite dark. Almost always your lightest value is going to be the sky in your painting. To establish a value and a color for the ocean and the water as you look out onto the horizon becomes lighter and cooler as it moves out in the horizon Okay. 
That's great. The painting, um, the white water as it comes closer also gets warmer. So if you remember that in your values, you'll have much more accurate and realistic values. If you keep the warms closer and the cools in the distance. Okay. I'm going to add a few darks for the rocks in the uh, middle ground. The painting has three parts. Foreground is kind of the bottom third of the painting. Middle ground is sort of the middle third. And then background would be the top third of the painting. I'm just using kind of a burnt sienna with ultramarine blue for this um, color I'm using as a uh, value for the rocks. Okay, that's working nicely. Okay. Now the other thing that's important to know in plein air painting is you don't want to get stuck in one area. You want to keep kind of moving around the entire painting. And that way you get a more cohesive painting in the end. Now one thing that's really beautiful that I'm noticing right now is the shadow that's falling from the rock. It's just magnificent. So I want to grab onto that before it's gone because it won't last. I'm just going to lay this in. This is viridian green, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of magenta. It's just a gorgeous color. And when the white water goes into shadow, it becomes cooler. So you don't want to use the same color that you use when the white water is in the light. Everything has to make tonal changes. This just kind of creeps back in here.
lot of painting is just observation. So if you can see it, you can paint it. Lost part of our rock here. It's very sparkly this morning. And to get that sense of sparkle in the water, you really need to use temperature and work the warms against the cools. Okay, I'm paying particular attention right now to the shadow that's under this cliff. It's creating beautiful pattern here on the, on the wet sand. Now if you notice, as I'm painting the water coming closer to us, it has a warmer tone. And it actually does have a warmer tone. And then I'm maybe exaggerating it just slightly in the painting. Okay. The other thing that I think really helps integrate the painting is to add a little bit of the ocean colors to the rocks. And you don't want to do it everywhere, but in just a few spots, it's helpful. In the foreground, I added a little bit of yellow ochre, but in the background, I'm adding a little bit of my mother color, which is this kind of beautiful blue.
this gives me an opportunity to add a little bit of this gray or mother color to some of these cliffs back here too and just tone them down a little bit. At this point in the painting, it's all about subtlety. Wanting to keep the edges kind of soft and have some sensitivity still to shapes and values. And I'm using a little bit smaller brush now. It's probably a two and very soft. And this allows me to get into some of these tiny places. Much better. As the light comes up, you'll see more detail in these cliffs, but I'm keeping it very simple for the painting. So when we first came out here, the light is very quiet. At this point in the painting, I need to make a decision about what I'm doing with the sky. And you've probably been wondering, well, why isn't there any color up there yet? And the reason is because the sky is probably the thing that's changing the most quickly. And so sometimes I'll wait to see how it's going to relate to the rest of the painting, or am I going to get some beautiful clouds, or and so forth to make some decision about where I'm going. It's pretty quiet, the sky this morning. It isn't saying too much, which might be just fine because there's so much going on down in this area. And we have a lot of drama going on in the water and with the shadow pattern and so forth. So I may, I may just keep it real simple and I probably will. So I think I'm just going to stay true to what's here. Sometimes it's nice to gild the lily a little bit, and there's no painting police here to stop you if you wanted to paint the sky a different color or add something to, um, like clouds or something. I, I, I'm a believer in being somewhat literal to what you're painting, but also there are times when you need to make decisions to do what's best for the painting. That might mean you move a tree or a bush or you add something that improves the quality of the painting.
getting close here. Just a little brush again. We're getting there. At this point in the painting, I need to ask myself, what needs emphasis? What do I want to add while I'm still out here in the field that might not be in my memory when I go back? Because today, I didn't even take a photo or any, any kind of reference. So it's kind of like what you see is what you get. So we're focusing on the keyhole as the point of interest in the painting. So I know that I want to have a little bit more light in that area. So I'm going to add a little bit. And then a little bit of this wet sand color in there too. And so what I might do at this point, really, is I would uh, maybe go back to the studio and finish edges, red flowers up here. going to go ahead and add a few touches of color to strengthen the center of in interest just a little bit. So it's so pretty. And it is there. So a few little notes of color or what some painters will call eye candy. 